Find out how this little dog became such an iconic figure on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Our story begins with a terrier mixed dog named Nipper, who was born in 1884 and died in 1895. He was named Nipper because he would nip the back of visitors' legs. He was first owned by Mark Baroud, but when Mark died, his brother Francis inherited Nipper along with a phonograph and some recordings of his dead brother's voice. Francis noticed the peculiar interest that the dog took in the recorded voice of his late master coming from the horn, and that's when he had an idea. But it wasn't until three years after Nipper died that Francis painted the picture of his idea of Nipper listening to his master's voice on the phonograph. Francis is quoted as saying, quote, It's difficult to say how the idea came to me beyond the fact that it suddenly occurred to me to have the dog listen to the photograph with an intelligent and rather puzzled expression and call it his master's voice would make an excellent subject. We had a phonograph, and I often noticed how puzzled he was to make out where the voice was coming from. It was certainly the happiest thought I ever had." End quote. After trying unsuccessfully to sell his painting to different phonograph companies, it was sold to the Gramophone Company for 100 pounds. He had to change the painting from a phonograph to a gramophone, which apparently he painted right on top of the first painting, because the painting still survives, and in the right light, you can see the old phonograph under the current gramophone. In 1910, the gramophone company replaced the recording angel trademark in the upper half of the record labels with the Nipper logo. The logo became known as His Master's Voice, or HMV. Eventually, the trademark was passed on to Victor Talking Machine, and they used it on Victor Machines, Letterheads, catalogs, and record labels. Gramophone Company went through many changing of hands and spawned many branches, and the logo remained in various branches in various locations. Victor merged with RCA, and RCA widely used the logo in advertising through the late 70s and 80s. GE absorbed RCA in 1986. His master's voice still exists as a trademark on radios. The trademark expired in 1989. In the 1970s, a bronze statue of the image was awarded by the record company EMI to artists or music producers or composers after selling more than 100,000 recordings. I couldn't find a picture of one though. This one's just an ornamental piece. In the 1990s, the Gramophone Company created a separate company called HMV, which stands for His Master's Voice, if you didn't catch that. And HMV is a chain of entertainment shops selling music and book-related merchandise and uses the logo. Some fun facts. A life-size ornament of Nipper appears in Cyndi Lauper's video, Time After Time. And in the 1946 Warner Brothers Looney Tunes cartoon, Daffy Doodles, Daffy Duck is a mustache fiend who draws mustaches on advertising signs, including the one of his master's voice. In a large eastern city, a demon is on the loose. The people are terrified. The police baffled. With diabolical cleverness, the monster strikes without warning and draws mustaches on all the ads. No one knows who this fiend is. It could be you. It could be me. But it happens to be me. And the place where Nipper is buried now has a bank parking lot sitting on top of it. Apparently inside the entrance of the bank, there's a little plaque dedicated to Nipper. Nipper now sits on top of a few historical buildings in various locations. The Nipper image has also been the subject of many parodies. Even Disney made a cute little parody of Pluto with the gramophone. My Bottle is one of these parodies. Old Tucker Whiskey was a brand of the Brown Foreman Company in Louisville, Kentucky 
formed in 1891 and is still in business. Note that the gramophone has been replaced by a whiskey jug and the horn replaced by a funnel. Instead of the horn sounding like his master's voice, this horn smells like his master's breath. Some of these parodies say his master's vice instead of voice, and they include some of the master's other vices, including a pipe and a tobacco pouch. This is one of my favorite bottles in my collection. It's a little stoneware mini whiskey jug, a little over five inches tall, and is dated before the Prohibition, so before 1920. It has an illustration of a dog sniffing a mini whiskey jug. It would have been sealed with a cork. Well, that's it for this episode. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.